And we're back with some more oxygen not included on our little radioactive base. Yeah, I'd call that, I'd call it a little bit radioactive. Now, one thing I really want to get around to today is mutating some plants. But before we mutate the plants, there's one thing we've been putting on the long finger for far too long. And that's knocking out the last of the science. We should have all of this science done ages ago, but we need to set ourselves up an orbital micro lab, a long term lab that can sit there for a long period of time and knock out all of this research, hopefully in one or two runs. But before we get around to that, we do need plastic. The Orbital Micro Lab requires a lot of plastic, uh, so that means we're going to need to harness a bunch of crude oil. Now, they've changed this map a lot in that there's not a lot of crude oil you start with. So I'm thinking what we're going to do is we're going to have to hook up this oil well over here, which, you know, one second, we'll put some tiles under that. We'll hook up this oil well, that'll pump us out a bunch of crude oil. That crude oil we will pump up to, where is it? Yeah, over here, we're, we're going to we're not going to do anything too complicated here and then we'll use we just need enough plastic to do the science and well replace our ladder column as well i'd like to replace all our ladders with plastic just to speed up the movement of our duplicates but before we do all of that we had to hook up the power power has been hooked up already i've just run the i've extended that power spine we built in the last episode all the way down we have so much energy coming in from our nuclear power that yeah i think i think we're going to be sorted for a long time to come and there is one other side project I would like to take care of, and that is getting rid of this. We have so much uranium coming in, it turns out this refinement was totally overkill. I kind of expected it was going to be, but in all fairness, I did not expect this mining setup to be as successful as it was. This thing is just, it's churning out so much uranium, we don't care. Even running two reactors flat out constantly, we're, we're just swimming in this stuff. So I think it's time we got rid of this. What I would like to do is mine these out. If we mine out the tiles, the bees can carry 10 times as much uranium per trip. However, these uh, hives, you'll notice, are starving, so they should be able to consume, oh god, most of this entire area and convert it all to uranium for us very, very quickly. Let's see what that does to our uranium production. I think, how much are we up to right now? We have more than enough, 13 tons of uranium. 13 tons of enriched uranium, 13.8. Yeah, I think we'll be good for a while longer. In fact, I think I'm going to demolish the second one as well. We don't really need it. And yeah, all the carbon dioxide is gone from that one too. Perfect, we'll just squish this out while we're here. I'm thinking with that much free space, the bees are wasting all their time up there, so we're gonna seal it off. Those bees will die up there with it being productive, but you know, give it five, 10 cycles, this will all be back to where it was, but all the bees trapped in a much smaller, much more easy to refine uranium place. Anyway, it refined 10 kilos of uranium in that, that section because the bees will pick up 10 kilos of refined stuff or uh, mined uranium. All right, that done, let's get plastic sorted. This should be fairly simple. We just have to find some clean water to dump into this oil well. Uh, I think I know where we can get some of that. I'll give you one guess where this came from because more than one guess is, is a little bit too generous. Uh, this water came all the way from over here, goes straight up the map. Actually, we'll pause it so it's a little bit smoother goes all the way up here and then we hang a left and it comes down to this cool steam vent which honestly I'd almost forgotten about but we have been storing all our ice in here so any steam given off by the cool steam vent goes past this and usually condenses now this was an ice biome at one point but now it's just a giant pool of water what we are going to do is we're going to build this pump down here it is going to pump the water up here which will go through that water sieve and get sent down now power for that will be oh, we forgot to do that. One second. That's going to come off our main spine. And oh my god, that was so messy. No, down there like that. Done. So all the water polluted or clean will get sent up through here, except for... Oh, damn it, why is there brine in there? How? Where did you even... You know what? We can mop it up. I am... Yep, that'll work. So we'll mop up that. That won't get into the pump. And then the salt water or the clean, or the clean water or the polluted water will go through here, get saved and sent down to the oil well. That should give us enough oil. Of course... Well, we should probably put in a little bit of automation to make sure this whole thing doesn't overflow. A small little tank of oil, so we will stick in a little automation sensor right there, just a hydro sensor. And once the oil gets up to that point, we'll turn off this uh, oil well. And we're going to need a pump down here. Give me a liquid pump. Boom. There we go. Power is already connected. Right, and that will pump all of the crude oil we harvest all the way up through here and all the way up to this. One second. One second. Did I see a... Nope, never mind. For a second there, I thought I saw a uh, non-insulated pipe segment. And that will go up there, which will get converted by the oil refinery, and then... <laughs> that will go all the way up here, and our petroleum will come all the way up to this really just jerry rig section up here, where we'll go into the polymer press and produce us some plastic. 
<sighs> I really should put a cooling solution here, but this, this water vent is like right there, so why not? And our plastic production begins, well, I wouldn't say in earnest, but at least we've got a decent amount of it up and running now. More than enough to knock out, hopefully, the science. So the petroleum is coming all the way from down here. Well, it hasn't quite filled up yet. You can see the water that's <laughs> providing the petroleum coming from there. I love the way that the two of them are just passing like ships in the night. And all that water comes all the way down here. The and you can see that spurts of crude oil coming up from where it's getting uh, shunted from down here. So this pops out the crude oil, gets sucked up, sent up to make plastic. I think that will, that will do for our plastic production for quite some time. The little crude oil pit will do okay. Once it hits about 500 kilos of pressure up there, we'll shut it off. And you know what? Let's put down uh, some plumbing down right down here. Uh, give me a pitcher pump. And we have anything we can make it out of with a little bit of heat resistance. Ah, we got some ceramics. Perfect. Uh, just to prevent it from overheating, let's say. Ooh, we'll put that there. It'll take a while before it gets to that point, but we're okay. That just means when we want to make some uh, crude oil liquid locks, we will be able to. Okay, with that out of the way, it's time to go up to space, and we need to come up with a better rocket plan. We want to build a rocket, and we want to maximize it for longevity orbiting a planet. We don't need to get it very far, but we just need to get it into space, and then land it again once the person inside starts to run out of resources. I'm thinking... hmm... One second. Looking at the three available rocket engines we have here, we've got carbon dioxide has a maximum height of 10, sugar has 16 height, and steam has 20. So steam, of the three engines we have available to us right now, steam seems to have the highest uh, ceiling to work with. However, in terms of uh, fuel efficiency and engine power and all that, it's way down. So it's going to be incredibly slow, but we don't care. We just got to lo loft it into orbit and then we're done. So I think we're going with the steam engine here. And where are we going to get some steam? If only we had oodles and oodles and oodles of steam nearby. Yes, let's let's steal some steam from the nuclear reactor. It probably won't cause any problems. Probably. Now, how high are we going to make this and how much are we going to be able to cram into it? One thing we also want to start making is oxalate. Oxalate is one of those things you can just cram into the rockets. Well, last I checked. Otherwise, we'll have to go to algae. So algae or oxalate. Oh, actually, wait. We can use the gas canisters or the gas tanks. Hmm. Let me think about this for a minute. In fact, let's just uh, get the basics of the rocket up and then go from there. To make this a bit more sustainable, we did have to chuck in a couple of solar panels here. Though you will notice that... Uh, I don't think we have enough glass for one of them. I've currently got the, uh, the glass forge working away. But we are going to need some power. Uh, the reason is, to fill this large gas canister, I think we can only fill it from the inside. So we're going to need to power some gas pumps inside there and some maybe some algae production to get us loads of oxygen. And then we're going to use that to dump it into the large gas cargo canister and then use that oxygen to fuel our trip. This thing can hold 11 thousand kilos yep 11 thousand kilos we can we can shuck a whole bunch of oxygen in there and this can keep this uh this space for a module aloft for a very 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 long time all right oh steam is starting to flow we put in a couple of gas pumps in here and they are going to pump out 150 kilos of steam into that engine and uh, once that engine is full what are we at oh, 10 kilos whatever let's see if Let's see if it can give us any range. If th there is the possibility that I've put so much weight on this, it won't give us any range. Ah, no, we can get one tile. That means we'll, we'll definitely get two. All right, inside here, um, I've been building a few things, namely a couple of gas pumps that we're filling into a gas intake fitting. Now, you've got a whole bunch of fittings here now under rocketry, so gas intake is what we want so that we can pump the oxygen from in here into that, which should dump it into the oxygen tank on the outside, in theory. I'm going to fill it all. I think we'll just go with oxygen diffusers. Very, very simple to set up. Now, power wire. Yeah, we'll just use some lead. Done. And to get that power, it comes from the power outlet fitting, which pulls power from the outside of the rocket. The outside of the rocket, though, has, what, this battery here and this solar panel module, which only generates 60 watts when the sun is up. As you can guess, that's not going to be enough to power the whole thing. So I'm thinking, uh, let's just inject a little external power. We have nuclear, so we don't really care. Our power requirements are pretty much sorted for, well, until we get into the late game and start doing, you know, this sort of ridiculous stuff, we should be fine. So let's just, oh, nope. Let's put that up there. And we might want to switch from something that's not lead. Uh, it, it's just, I'm pretty sure if we don't use something that with a higher temperature resistance, it will get melted. So we'll put you up to there and we'll just plug you into the battery. Done. And with that plugged into the battery, we should be able to inject as much power as we need into this section. With the power finally connected, this battery basically just, yep, yeah, done. Also, one nice thing, duplicants can now walk across here, and this is actually a platform they can walk on, meaning you don't need to put across one of the uh, 
the gantries. You don't need a gantry for them to get into these spacefarer modules. They can just walk up this ladder and hop in. And they seem to be able to build all of these things without really having to get too far across. I like that. It's just some nice quality of life improvements. Now let's see what's going on in here. Yep, yep, that's good. Why are you... Why are you overloading? What have we got on this? How? Is there like a limit on these power outlets? Hmm. Overload damage. Took me a minute, but I managed to figure it out. The reason this was overloading in here is... Well, it turns out it's a continuous circuit. For example, I thought that when I was plugging in that big heavy watt wire here, that was the end of it. However, it's not. That basically made everything that was plugged in inside the spacefarer module part of the big heavy watt wire grid. So it was effectively like I'd grabbed a conductive wire and just plugged it into one of these big conductive wires. That didn't work out so good. So instead what we did was we installed a quick power transformer and that power transformer allowed us to just speed in one kilowatt of power, which keeps this whole thing up and running. And if we look in the interior here, we can now pump in one kilo of oxygen per second into this, uh, into the gas intake, which is slowly but surely going into this one here. We're up to 300 kilos. So all we need to do is wait for like at one kilo a second. According to my calculator, that tells me we just got to wait 183 minutes to fill this up using two, two gas pumps. That's, um, we might launch a little bit before that's full. That's, there's got to be an easier way to fill this. Hmm. Let me start doing some playing around here. I know you can... Oh, wait, you can use these uh, new modules. One second. Well, this is taking a while. I think... I think we'll wait till we get about 3,000 kilos. That'll give us 50 cycles of oxygen for one dupe. Wow, you can really load these things up if you want to go on some really long missions. But no, 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 we don't have time for that. While that is going on, I think we're going to do a little bit of uh, excavation. We haven't been cleaning out the whole map, so I think we'll just... Uh, we'll get rid of that slime biome. It's a pretty big slime biome, but I think by the time they're done with that, we should have enough oxygen on our rocket to, to make our way out. Uh, let's just time-lapse this sucker. Another quick side project we want to take care of while this is going on is food for our astronaut. We're going to need to cook them up something that can preserve itself a little bit longer. So we're going to need to get ourselves some bristleberries and make ourselves some berry sludge. But that can wait, that can wait. We'll, we'll get this done first. And it's clean. Perfect. Oh, the buddy bud, de never mind, the buddy bud didn't survive. I was trying to leave that to uh, spread its germs, but it's gone. All right, over here, we have stuck in every single bristle blossom we've got. We've stuck it in the back of the ranch, namely because it doesn't affect a ranch. It's still a stable, well, stable ranch, whatever you want to call it. It's still a stable, and we get to put in all of these plants back here, though we don't have enough to fill out the whole line just yet. Uh, Rocketry-wise, where were we? Ah, uh, yes, this is up to 3,900 kilos. I'm just going to actually let this keep going until we've got the food finished. Once our first crop of uh, bristle blossoms comes in, we can start cooking ourselves some berry sludge. Berry sludge, however, will fit in right... Where is it? We're going to need a microbe musher for that. It's weird the way you have to go backwards to make this stuff, but we check that in there, and that'll allow us to turn out all the, uh, the berry sludge we need. I have been collecting lots and lots of seeds for a very, very long time. Where are we? We have 656 sleet wheat grains. That's, yep, that's exactly where we wanted to be. We've been collecting all of those because we want to use them for this particular thing, and we also didn't want to run out of seeds before we got a chance to mutate them. Well, we wait for our first bristle blo blossom crop to come in so we can start making the berry sludge. Let's get around to designing our rocket. Now, I think we should have more than enough gas in that. Yeah, 4,500 kilos. That's so much oxygen. Let's get in here and start changing it up. We want to make this a nice long-term survivability place for our scientist. We're going to strip everything out, including the console. You can actually do that now with the rocketry. You can get rid of the rocket control station. Such a nice quality of life improvement. Now let's see how we're going to squish in all of our sciencey stuff. The first thing we're going to try is cram in the bathrooms up there and the orbital microlab up the top. They're going to be... Oh, and you know what? We'll throw some furniture in here. I think... I'm not sure if the microlab counts as industrial machinery. But if it doesn't, that means we can turn this place into a mess hole as well. For now, we're just going to dump in a gas vent here, and we're going to pump oxygen out of the container to fill this whole room. Well, we're, we're about to end up with some bleach stone in here because of this hand sanitizer, and I've learned from past experience, while it's waiting to build, that bleach stone that's inside the building before it's built can off-gas. So let's pressurize this place as best we can before that happens. Well, this is what we've come up with so far. It's not exactly perfect. Ooh, buddy bud seeds. Perfect. This is going to be a very small, but I think we've actually got too much space to work with almost. 
there's the latrine, so yes, they've got an outhouse and all that. Uh, then we've got a mess hall over here for a plus three morale boost. Then they're going to have a bedroom over here, though I think hmm, this may end up smaller. Yeah, we might want to put in a gas pump down here and then use that gas pump to filter out any carbon dioxide, though I'm not even sure how long they're going to be up here. I mean, we're going to knock out all the research pretty quick, I think. Hmm. Let me think for one minute. Yep, it's official. There, there's way too much space in here. We have uh, converted this to... Well, oh, wait, how is it a mess hall now? I thought we had that as a great hall. There's 32 tiles of space. What are we missing? Here is the finished product. The results of all of that thinking and planning. We have over here a wonderful plus six great hall that will make uh, our duplicate nice and happy on their journey. This is their barracks, which will give them a plus one morale and a latrine, which is another plus one morale. And for food, we have this refrigerator here crammed with 10 kilos of berry sludge. That is 39,000 calories, which will keep them going for 39 cycles. Uh, we have a storage bin full of dirt because there's an outhouse right here and that outhouse will, yeah, they'll run for an eternity. This bleach don't last for, let's just say they're going to run out of oxygen and food long before these become a problem. We've also given them six tons of plastic because that's what the micro lab consumes. So I think we're ready to launch them. We just got to pick someone to, well, chuck in here like a monkey and be shot into space. Let's do this. I was going to wait until uh, Furious George came up, well, came off their sleep schedule to go into the rocket, but then I realized they're going to be up there for several cycles. Let's just launch them now. Bless him. I'm sort of impatient. All right, let's do the interior here. Are you good to go? I believe you have everything you need. Let's just make sure there's a couple of things changed here. One is consumables. Furious George is going to be the only one allowed to eat berry sludge. That stops everyone back home from eating it. All right, this has to be enabled because we don't want... Well, we want them to be able to use the toilet. I knew I'd forget that otherwise. You kind of have to disable this, otherwise your, your dupes keep coming up here to use it, even though there's a toilet perfectly functional one down in your base, and they drove miles out of their way to come here. It's it's crazy. All right, I think we're sorted. Let's launch, launch this sucker and see if we've done anything or missed anything. As has been pointed out in the comments, you can actually just launch into space. We've set this to orbiting. Uh, so we can just click change, left click, boom, we're in space type of thing. Uh, let's launch this sucker. Oh, and it's slowed down the game a little bit. I've been running it a little bit fast. What's the warnings? Cargo transfer? No, oh, yeah, you, you can keep the cargo. That's your oxygen, which you're going to use to breathe. Uh, we're going to acknowledge those, and we're getting the launch sequence. All right, get out of here. Or think about it. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. That's why we switched from lead to copper wire. Oh, wow, those things go off real, real slow. Okie dokie then. I'm kind of curious if it has enough power to keep it going up there as well. First things first, you can uh, unequip that suit. That's going to release a big blob of carbon dioxide in there. But I think... I think we're good. Now, there's one more trick I've been advised about once they get into orbit. Before we let them get into the research though, we are going to disable this building. This is a trick I was told about. If you don't disable this building, they'll keep coming back here about once a cycle to update this. But if you disable the building, they stop doing it, and that leaves them completely free to do nothing but research all day, every day, which is kind of what we want. Uh, first thing we want to research is... yeah, Red Bull Propulsion. I, I really want Red Bull Propulsion. After that, we'll grab Hydrogen Rockets. Ooh, yeah, yeah, I just basically want all the good rocket tech first. Now, let's make sure they get to work. Perfect, we got plastic there, we got a micro lab there. You will be fine. In fact, if we check your skills, they have a 13 morale requirement to do all of this, but since they've got so many interests in all this, they've got a plus six just from learning those skills. Uh, another six from a great hall, plus eight from a meal. Basically, yeah, they won't break. They won't have any mental breaks. They can stay up here nice and safely for as long as we need them to. All right, we need to research as much tech as we possibly can while they're up there, which means I'm going to need to do, need to do a little bit of micromanagement down here. Where is it? Ah, yes this thing, the material study terminal. We're going to need to keep this topped up with rad bolts all the time. Now we could just set this to fire them constantly, but mm, anything we do to do that, it, it just always results in wasted rad bolts, which I'm not a particularly a fan of. What's this up to? 49, yeah. Well, I think we can chuck another one in there. I've uh, done it this way where it bounces down on top of them, but I was hoping we could find some way to actually bounce this through that there and then keep going on down, but there's nothing you can really do. You can put a... The only thing that the rad bolts seem to be able to pass through is one of the door types, where is it? The uh, pneumatic doors. And you can't place a pneumatic door under one of these. I'd really like a way where we could bounce it down through here and have multiple labs, one below the other, so that the same rad bolt could feed all of them if needs be. 
Furious George is, yes, furiously working, it would appear. Jesus. Who designed that machine? Come on, seriously, it keeps falling apart. It looks like you have to... Wait, close the CD tray. Close the CD tray. Ah, oh, never mind. <laughs> Back of the home world. Yeah, I believe our, uh, our current research for material studies is asleep. I think we have multiple researchers, though. One moment. So it turns out Philip Matthew Torres has plenty of science skills going on. Unfortunately, they were in the wrong area. We'll just do a quick reskilling on them. There we go. They're straight into material science and advanced research. They can now man all the other labs around here. That gives us two researchers. Well, technically three. We've got one here, one that should go over there, and then our third one is... Yeah. Perfect. This can only go well. Now, just give me a few minutes. I'm going to try and knock out all of the essential researches. Turns out researching uh, nuclear rockets is a little bit expensive. It's 370 material science, which, you know, the nuclear science, 250 of the orbital, only 100 advanced and 70 novice. Yeah, in fact, these ones are even more expensive. This is going to take some time. Oh, and high velocity destruction. I am so looking forward to that one. Oh, an improved hydrocarbon. You know, I'm looking forward to quite a few of these. All right, let's get this on. I was trying to play around here and uh, figure out a way to automate this in some way, and it's just, it's not coming together. The, the problem being... You're always going to end up wasting rad bolts. For example, here I thought, if I just put down enough of these, they would slowly but surely dribble in the rad bolts as fast as they're required. But the the speed they're used at depends on the, the science skill of the, the dupe using it. So if the dupe has a higher science skill, they'll go through the, the science faster, plus you need to keep it active all the time. It, it's just annoying. Some people use sensors here to detect when the, the duplicate is around, and then they activate it every so often. I can't think of a way to actually do this without wasting any rad bolts. Also, I've switched this all out to lead tiles, because if you do mess up and launch one that is not necessary, and it hits the lead tile, it produces far less radiation than if you, you know, hit it off something like gold. Gold is one of the worst things to hit it off. There we go. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, oops, I kind of hit that one a few times. Metal tile's got a few radioactive contaminants in it, but it's fine. It's barely spread at all. Our research has just given us gas rocket port loader. Loads gases to the storage of a linked rocket. Ah, uh, that's what we needed. That's what would have allowed us to pump gas into the rocket without having to build all the stuff inside it in the first place. I mean, I'm glad we found a workaround, but... Yeah, that would have been a lot simpler. I'm gonna have to invest in one of those in the future. Or maybe prioritize the research on it. Well, this very slow process was ongoing. I figured we'd start ourselves a massive sweep. Why not? We can put together a little bit of a, an infinite storage section. And start all the duplicates running around cleaning up the mess that's around the place. This place here should do just fine. They have finally finished all of the research required to get us, well, the tech we were looking for, which was the Radbolt engine. Uh, where is it? Up oh, here, yes. We've finally got Radbolt propulsion, which I'm really looking forward to exploiting. Now, I'm just going to pick up cartographic module. Automatically analyzes adjacent space while on a voyage. That could be very useful for us, especially with the range on that Radbolt engine. It appears to have a very long range, but slow. All right, with that done, this is what the Radbolt engine looks like. And I have been looking forward to playing around with this new toy. All right, according to this, the Red Bolt engines are faster than hydrogen engines, but have a lower height restriction. So these things can only go up to a height of 20, same as the steam rocket. They're still better than uh, sugar engines or carbon dioxide engines, of course, but they have the same height as the steam engine, just far, far faster, like incredibly... Mm. You know what, let's uh, grab this area here, say a new rocket, uh, steam engine. That goes at uh, engine power of 6, speed 1.5. The nuclear one has a speed an engine power of 30, as opposed to 6, and a speed of 6, as opposed to 1.5. So this will travel way faster, and has more power, and has more range. I'm liking that. I'm liking that an awful lot. We just need to hook that up to a Red Bull generator. There's plenty of ways to generate lots and lots of Red Bulls, so I think we'll probably do that somewhere over here. Give ourselves lots of space. Say, line up a whole string of rockets around here. Yeah, that'd be nice. Oh, this is our radioactive waste, or nuclear waste. I have no idea how you generate this much. It makes absolutely no sense to me. This is a closed-loop system, so the steam doesn't get consumed. You're only putting in about... Why is there 41 kilos in there? Hmm. You're only putting in about... Uh... Something's going wrong. Yeah, I see the problem. These are overheating, the steam turbines at the top. And because they're overheating, they're not processing the water, and because the water's not going in there, more water is getting added in. It's a good thing this was noticed now before this becomes a problem. If this gets up to 100 kilos, those reactors would explode. So instead, we're going to deconstruct this reactor right now. Damn it. I was really hoping those, uh, those 
this would be able to handle the heat. Oh, damn it. What, what is going on? It looks like some of the nuclear waste we put in there has disappeared. Look, you can see the... Oh. Did we get it down so cold? One of them actually, some of the tiles actually broke. Oh, that could be a problem. No, what I mean is um, this nuclear waste, if it goes down below a certain temperature, where is it? Yeah, nuclear waste, if it goes below a temperature of 26.9, well, you actually have to give it a two degree range of influence to say 24.9, then what would happen is the water would actually just break in the pipe. Do we have any leftovers? No, we just have conductive wire down here. So I'm thinking what maybe happened was some of these actually broke in the pipe and then dropped out. Hmm. And after they dropped out, that meant we had less water in the pipe, meaning less cooling going around, and we've ended up with this sort of missing blobs here and there. So we need to refill this. First, though, we definitely need to take this reactor offline. This reactor needs to be stopped, so we've only got half a reactor to deal with. That's far less heat, because it's getting toasty in there. It's 260 degrees. Uh, there should be some sort of klaxon blaring. And poof. Ooh, okay, that's so much better. All right. That means we have, even though we've got reduced cooling, we've definitely got enough steam turbines and enough of everything to keep that under control. Temperature is going back down. That's, that's good. Everything, everything's going back to normal. Unfortunately, these things are still way overheated. It's going to take forever. To, well, it's going to take a while to get them back to normal, as well as that we've dumped a whole bunch of extra steam pressure in here. Up here, it should realist, realistically be about 30 kilos. But because we've dumped in so much extra water, it's risen the pressure everywhere. I need to strip out the amount of extra steam that came in here, leave this thing on one reactor until we've got it back to balance. Uh, I've increased the temperature of this in these from 42 to 48. That should mean we don't get any over chilling again of our coolant. We're going to have to top the coolant back up as well. There's, there's a bunch of things that need to be done before this reactor can be ready. And that's kind of going to eat into the rest of the episodes because I can't... Uh, I can't really leave this unattended. It's a nuclear reactor, you know? You have to fix those things. I did want to start getting a Red Bull generator up and running, and I still also want to get plants done, but we're, we're actually, we're, yeah, we're going to be out of time. So yeah, I'm going to cut this out here. Sorry we didn't get any more done, but, uh, you know, when nuclear reactors cause a problem, you kind of have to stop and take stock of things. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed, and good luck. <laughs>